perfect competition, we end up with this result. Here are the consumers over here, and I'm going to be really brief on this because we need to Here's the demand curve. Add those up, and we get the market. And there's the market for me. Okay? We take this with the supply curve, which is the sum of the marginal cost curves. Bring that over to here. Here's marginal revenue. Firm's demand curve. Here's marginal cost. Marginal cost equals marginal revenue. There's the profit maximizing output level. And at equilibrium, because of entry and exit, all firms are earning their average total cost, their minimum average total cost, meaning zero economic profit. There's no incentive to enter, no incentive to exit. Further, all firms are the same size, which happens to be the minimum cost of production. You cannot, as you all remember from your last exam, you cannot produce it below this price here. It can't be done. New technology has to show up. Something has to change the cost curves to make that happen. Now, what we found was that price equals marginal cost. We observed that to be the outcome of this whole sort of model here. That is the definition of economic efficiency. If you should, just by happenstance, write an exam question on the final about economic efficiency, it best somewhere have price equal marginal cost in it. Because that is a statement that says that resources are allocated to their highest and best use. Meaning that nowhere else could any of the resources go and get a better compensation. Nowhere else could a resource go and be more valued than it is where it is where it is now. Okay? The reason that you kept working for me, Darren, is because no one else would pay you more. Sorry, guy. Uh, and you were then resource allocated to its highest and best use, as are all of the inputs to the production process. That is economic efficiency. Now, I had some complaints about economic efficiency being touted as the be-all and the end-all for resource allocation that came about by a whole host of public policy issues because it did leave out the fact that this budget line sitting right here mattered to the story. Now, I've got nothing I got no complaint with economic efficiency. There it is, before our very eyes. But to say that economic efficiency is devoid of a value judgment, to me, is not so. Okay? Because it means that the fact that the income distribution is what it is and is unquestioned is my complaint. Okay? But this is the foundation for what we're about to begin now. I need to talk about economic efficiency in a monopoly. And what we're going to find, big surprise, is that they're not. In fact, we found that before Thanksgiving. So let's take a look at that again. Okay. Uh, on my web page, which you get to by going to the economics department and looking up people and then finding me, there is a little workbook I put together back in the days when I was teaching four and five hundred students at a crack. Um, and there is a kind of a nice little page in there. Has anyone gone to see that? Okay. Uh, well, take a look. Because there's a graph there, which I'm about to use here. Okay. It helps us understand economic efficiency in a monopoly. Here's the downward slope of demand curve. Remember, this is the firm. But the firm is also the market. Why? There's only one firm. The marginal revenue curve looks something like this. Okay? It falls faster than the demand curve does because we're going to assume, at least for a moment, we're going to assume that all people get charged exactly the same amount as everybody else. Okay? That is to say, there's no price discrimination. There's no market segmentation. I'll elaborate on that shortly. Okay? Here is marginal cost. 
garden variety looking marginal cost curve. Marginal cost equals marginal revenue. This is the monopoly profit maximizing output level. And like every other economic actor in the game, this is not somehow unique to those evil monopoly guys. Every actor in the game, so we have argued thus far, is going to be paid or charged the highest they can get. And the market says that that is right here. This is the monopoly price. Okay? Okay. Green? Uh, I'm sorry, why is this the marginal revenue cost option to begin? Is it now? Because if I want to induce you to buy one, I have to drop the price to you. Correct? But I've also got to drop the price to everybody else. So while I get extra money from you, I'm losing a little piece of money from everybody else. On net, I'm still making a positive number until I get to here. Okay? So there we have it. Okay? Now, price, marginal cost, not equal. This is the economist's indictment of the monopoly. They are economically inefficient. Now, I'd like to sort of get all exercised over that. So, here you are. The price here is 10 bucks. And you come to me and say, I've been on lock, and I have figured out that if you produce one more, it's only going to cost you that much money. And I'm willing to pay you this much. Will you produce it? I refuse to produce it for you because my marginal revenue is down here. Okay. My marginal cost, I'm sorry, marginal revenue is down here. <coughs> Here's how much extra I'm going to get from you, right? revenue is below my marginal cost. So you're right. It only cost me five dollars to produce this thing. But if I give it to you for this price, I'm gonna only get three dollars. <coughs> and I've got to drop the price to everybody else. Do you understand that? That's the answer to your question from a moment ago. So my marginal revenue is lower than my marginal cost. What did society have to give up to produce this thing for you? Five bucks. Okay. What's it worth to you? Seven bucks. Do I produce it? No. Something that would be worth $7 does not get produced because I am artificially restricting the production in order to maximize my profit. Does that follow here? That's why I want you to get all exercised about this. Wait a minute. Society only has to give up, what, five bucks for this stupid thing, okay? And if it were produced, <coughs> seven dollars worth of stuff would be in the world. And I stand in the way of having that enter the world. For good reason, after all. My marginal revenue is lousy three dollars. I still gotta give five bucks to produce this thing. I'm losing two bucks on this. So 
so I'm not going to do it. But the value to society of the resources is seven bucks. Society is losing two bucks in this direction. And you come along and you say, well, how about me? And I go, no. And no, and no, and no, and no. All of these things have a marginal revenue below the marginal cost. As a result, I will refuse to produce anything further than this point here, thereby creating what's known as the dead weight loss. Sometimes it's called the dead weight loss triangle, okay? Or a burden, okay? And let me clean this up a little bit and I'll show you where it is. We can actually measure this. In fact, economists are asked to do that. In antitrust cases, economists are asked to find out what the loss to society is of the monopoly power that somebody's contesting. Okay? Now, this is why we did perfect competition first, by the way. Under a perfectly competitive market, how much would be produced? Well, where price is equal to marginal cost. Price has to be on a demand curve, that's why we invented them. So here is the perfectly competitive price, and here is the perfectly competitive output level. And when we look at this for a second, there's two things that just jump out at us. The first thing that jumps out at us, because we all go into this game sort of biased, damn monopolist is overcharging. <laughs> the price is higher. Okay? But that's not what gets the economist's attention. What gets the economist's attention is you're underproducing. It is the fact that I'm not producing it for you that is creating the loss. After all, if I charge you some ridiculous price, eh, so what? Too bad for you. Right, Vincent? 